<laughs> but oh but they God. tend to fall down <laughs> after a while. So I've been I've not been hanging them up so often because they tend yeah. to fall down. In that term, I became an expert in in body language and in how you oh. Oh. look. Oh. You see, <laughs> there, there, there there it goes. See exactly <laughs> that. that now the, that always happens. <laughs> Mark. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of The Art of the Fail. Uh, Super, super, super excited for uh, today's episode and the guest. We have a very fascinating guest on today's show, uh, Mark Bowden. Mark, thank you so much for uh, for joining the show today. Uh, It's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, Kristen, you're Kristen. Yeah? Yes, I'm Christian. Yeah, and then <laughs> right. Chris, Chris Good. is to. So, uh, I want to get this right. To... I don't want to fail at this. <laughs> Chris, you're Chris, Chris is to my right. And again, we need to get those t-shirts. Chris, get the and t-shirts. Done. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. so, uh, just just a little bit of background before I go into the the rapid fire questions for people listening. Uh, Mark is a um, he's a three time author, a, a TED speaker, and also what's very fascinating uh, that Chris and myself are really looking forward to digging into is uh, Mark is actually a world-renowned body language expert uh and so that as soon as i saw that and heard that that kind of like made my eyes pop a little bit so <laughs> i got a feeling today is going to be a really good conversation uh as always and yeah we're gonna we're gonna have a good time but uh before we get started on that let's kick things off with uh what we once used to call rapid fire questions <laughs> now just we call them q a because they're not so rapid uh, well, the, the answers don't tend to be as rapid, or you're not as rapid in your in your questioning. Who's, kind of, who's, been, kind who's been letting you down in terms of this rapid bit? Kind, is it you, or, kind, or are you feeling that I'm going to let you down? Where's it going to? No, no, no. I don't, you know what? I don't want to put that on you. I'll, maybe you I'll will say, inevitably I'll, fail. I will inevitably right. fail at that. It's already okay, a given. I'm going to get wound up in this failure. Yes. And mess it up. Yeah. I'm. I'm I, br- I get. I get bought into this. So what I want. What, what I want <laughs> listeners and viewers to know is. Who's been failing in the past <laughs> around this so they know the kind of scheme of things? So if this doesn't turn into rapid fire, as, as it isn't now, we can't even get it off the yeah, ground. Right. You, you the see moment. what I mean? Okay. We haven't even asked but, one but question If it goes yet. wrong, is, has it been gener- generally your failure or the guests? <laughs> I'm going to go with mine because it's, yeah, it's, re- it's a recurring thing, so it's got to be on me. But Mark, I'm bringing you down with me. <laughs> good, good. I'm happy about that. All good, right, let's go. Let's, let's get it. started. Let's so, first it. question: What did you have for breakfast this morning? Uh, coffee, coffee, just coffee. All right, and no, th- no breakfast. It's funny because that sort of segues into my next question: Coffee or tea, and how many in a day do you consume? Yeah, coffee. One, one coffee. Just one. All right, good on you. Uh, yeah. Are you an iPhone or an Android guy? Uh, Android. Okay. Um, this is sort of like personal curiosity. How many speaking engagements have you been involved with in your career? Well, I don't even count them. Don't there you even go. count them. Lot, m- loads. Okay. Um, uh, thousands, hundreds, Ooh, not wow. millions, but thousands, thousands. Probably wow. Thousands, probably into the thousands for sure. That's incredible. Um, yeah. What would you say was either your? This is probably really hard for you to to answer. Uh, what would you say was? your favorite one or even maybe a couple talks that really stand out that you delivered and that you thought to yourself after like wow that was really good or you know what you're probably going to say all of them that that broke up and it sounded like you said what is your favorite wine (laughs) <laughs> well, you, I was, like, I was you, like, what an odd, I don't know. Like, you could answer that if you have a favorite wine. I have to wine. ask somebody else. Uh, but but actually what you, were, what you were asking was what's been one of my favorite talks. There's, yep. a, there's a, what I think is a really good um, uh, TEDx uh, talk that I did, which you can go and see, just uh, um, uh, watch on YouTube, put in Mark Bowden, TEDx. Yep. Uh, I think that's really good. I think it's really good. About the inauthentic... Yes, okay. how to be inauthentic. Yeah. Uh, I think it's good because oh, this is quick fire. Do you want me to talk about this, or should we just? That's pass? you know what and we're all we're already on it. See so what happens. Let's talk. Let's talk about, let's talk about right. it. Okay, because I don't want to. I don't want to mess up this quick fire no, thing no, no, by no. going. Oh it's, yeah, it's already Mark been messed, really up. messed up. The quick fire thing because he started in some story about his TEDx talk, <laughs> some kind of self-aggrandizing kind of. I don't want to be part of that that thing unless you say, "Hey, Mark, I want you to tell." Mark, the, go so, for it. Go for all right, it. Thank you. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I, I was a bit annoyed by the whole authenticity mm-hmm. thing. I, I don't kind of get it, and I think it's, it's, it's a little bit 
corrupted and odd. Uh, so I enjoyed doing it because it was about being inauthentic and how important that is. And uh, and so many people have come to me about that and gone, yeah, you really hit the nail on the head about that. And it was a great, fun, entertaining uh, speech. So awesome. Go. Awesome. I'm going to dig into that after the yeah, rapid perfect. fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, uh, is, is there someone that... Um, that you've either followed or sort of looked up to or like really thought like, wow, this person is a great professional speaker during your career. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of people out there, but I would say in general, what I'm looking at is uh, often other, other performers of all kinds of things, other artists really, Mm um, in that I'm not, I'm not trying desperately to follow anybody else. I just kind of, I, I, I speak about the subject I speak. I speak in the way that I speak. Right. Um, and actually what I follow more as something to emulate is is uh, a whole bunch of visual artists out there or artists in okay. general who I think are uh, doing something really interesting with the idea of authenticity and the idea of fake and the idea of truth. Hmm. Awesome. And all right, last question before we actually kick things off. Are you are you right. ready to get started? Am I ready to get started? Was that yes? Yes. All right. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I've, I've been. I know about you. I've been ready all the time. <laughs> okay. No. Yeah, no. You see, you that's know. where you, you messed up. We're not always. We're, ready. we're not always ready. <laughs> we're, it's actually far from yeah, it. But I thought we were doing it. Yeah. But whatever. Wait. No. 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 We're we're doing it now. <laughs> we're we're ready now. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Mark. Uh, one of the things. You, I just wanted to start off with. I came up with it as you were as you were sort of talking about the inauthenticity um, yeah. speech, and I'm I'm watching you here on on the video. Uh, you talk a lot about first impressions, and you talk um, obviously in the context of body language. How do you approach uh, a video or a podcast, or maybe in the context of business um, or conference calls? How do you present yourself? Um, in that scenario? Because I know you've talked about different scenarios in the boardroom and things like this. What's unique about this, what we're doing right now? Yeah, well, usually uh, when I do these, they're a lot better organized. And... <laughs> no <laughs> doubt in my mind. <laughs> they're, just, they're just better. Yeah. And, uh, so... <laughs> so I've purposely uh, really messed up today because normally I'd, I'd, I'd close the, the doors there on my office, Mm -hmm. uh, kind of shelves there. So you wouldn't see the, the, you know, all the accoutrements, all the stuff (laughs) here and, and I'd have put it, so I'm going to close that. I'm going to remedy that and close those now because actually it annoys me from the back seeing all that kind of mess (laughs) there. So I'm just going to go and yeah, I'm just going to close that. Yep. Nice Uh, segue. I'll be be back with you in a, in a second. (laughs) Yeah. All right. I can't stand the, the mess there. And then normally what I do is is I've got these kind of big kind of posters of yep. my latest book. Yeah. And and they would normally like hang up like like this kind of <laughs> like that but, oh but they God. tend to fall down after a while so i've been i've not been hanging them up so often because they tend yeah. to fall down i can't find a way to really stick them onto the onto the glass so that one's already already <laughs> gone so i'd, I'd kind of purposely tried to make this whole thing a shambles yep. for you genius um well that's what we do all the time I'm, I'm i'm succeeding uh <laughs> but my but but my nature is to have stuff kind of organized and to avoid the, the shambles, mm-hmm. avoid mm-hmm. the mess. Um, because people make judgments about you based on what they first, first see. Right. So a lot of what I'd normally do in these podcast situations is make sure, you know, you're getting a, a better shot of me here and I'm not. Oh, I, you know, I, I try and avoid, I, I did try and avoid the shambles that happens when, when you're just using your normal you know, laptop angle and you just, you know, see up somebody's <laughs> nose right. during the whole, the whole, I'm, I've, I've tried to avoid that because what, what I do is I get, I get my, uh, my recycling bin. You yeah. can see it's labeled, yeah. it's, like, yep. it's actually labeled, <laughs> you know, recycle there. And, uh, and I tip, um, all the, all the recycling out of it. You can, you can see what I've, what I've 
that I tipped it out here and, and <laughs> on, the, on the floor. I'm loving like, this. This is the only recycling bin that this I This is have. good. This is quality. So, uh, so I put that on top of on top of here and then angle that and it and it all looks a lot better here. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. so I've I've purposely I've 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 faked essentially uh, ineptitude around <laughs> around this and now I'm getting a, a little more uh uh, adept around it. There you go. There's my answer. Awesome. I fake. I fake to, uh, Usually, I would try and stop all the fails, and I've just allowed some of them to happen today. <laughs> so, if you well, only it, have it, like this much of your your body in the in the frame, yeah. is there a better way to um, present yourself, or is there is there anything that you have to now mold to because you only have this much of you to show? I'm trying. Yeah, to, I, so, I'm trying so to be very. The more of me you can see within a certain tolerance uh the more optimistic you're likely to be about me especially if if i've got if if i'm showing you more of myself showing you open hand gestures this kind of thing here is probably going to make you a little more optimistic about me and how much you can trust me and and so forth but so i could start with a shot like that and then get closer to you Mm -hmm. uh over time you know, one of the problems with these podcast things is is that is that you tend to end up looking at your, your own image down yeah. here. Yeah. Your yep. brain's going, but yeah. but what do I look like? Am yeah. I good? So my eyes keep going down here. And what I'd normally do uh, to stop that failure, uh, I'd normally have a whole bunch of post-it notes here, but um, uh, I failed to to have them ready. <laughs> um, so I'm going to use an old post-it note which has something else on it. Yep. And what I would normally do is get a big uh, uh, felt tip pen use this one here i'm just going in my uh, pen drawer and i put uh, a smiley face like this this smiley (laughs) face here and i stick that above the camera uh you know little light so Uh. it reminds me to look up there Mm -hmm. at the the camera camera. and and smile at you nice uh but again i purposely failed to do this today so i'm going to avoid <laughs> that and it, it won't be such a good podcast yeah uh, well. because i'm going to end up you know inevitably looking at myself in this little corner picture here that and for many other reasons i'm sure that, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> and what absolutely is, what is there to look at in terms of you yeah, guys exactly <laughs> Well, um, there's there's a nice sign behind us, so you yeah. kind of just look through us if you yeah, wanted yeah. to. I can I can do that thing of just looking at the fail. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an instruction, isn't it? Fail, it's fail. like a like a command. Exactly. Or just look at Chris. Yeah. That's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mark, uh, before we get into more body language stuff, which I'm super fascinated about, um, what we do like to always do with our guests is dig a little bit more into their past and their sort yeah. of journey from from the start so can you start at the at the very early uh ages where'd you grow up what'd you do where'd you go to school um how did you get into fall in love with what you're doing now yeah okay let's start at the start then um where i grow up i grew up in a uh, initially in a place called northampton which is 60 miles up the m1 from london it's uh <laughs> it was so northampton was going to be the capital of england at mm. one point uh, I can't remember what year. It might have been about the, the 11, 1200s or something like that. Uh, unfortunately, it burnt down. Oh. And, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole town. Well, it used to happen to English towns at that point. They, they just burned down, yep. all made of wood, full of flammable material, people walking around with fires and candles and all kinds of stuff. Inevitably, a town or a city would always burn down at some point. Northampton just managed to do it uh, just on the cusp of becoming the the capital. It then, at one point, was going to become a great university town, uh, a bit like Oxford and Cambridge. But then the, the people running Oxford and Cambridge uh, lobbied, I think, what would have then been Henry VIII of England hmm. and, and said, look, just let's crush Northampton <laughs> and, <laughs> and make sure it never gets to be in Oxford and Cambridge. <laughs> so what it turned out, to be was the capital uh, in Europe at one point of shoe production. So it was a great leather uh, town. By the time I got born, it, it, it still had a few shoe making, a bit of shoe making capacity, but not, not much anymore. So uh, to, to a large extent, it was a bit of a dead end town. And so I, I, I went to London instead and, uh, and studied uh, there and uh, studied 
performing arts, in fact, studied uh, arts in, in, in general, especially mm -hmm. the ones which are uh, performed in some way, which would actually be to a certain extent most of them. And uh, I got really interested there in visual imagery and how the visual image affects the mind. What do we have to do with a visual image to tell a story and to convince, to con your brain into something being real that isn't real? How do we create these illusions for the brain which tell it that something is, is alive maybe that isn't alive, like in animation, it's a great Latin word, anima, to make, right. to make live, to make live something that isn't live. I got fascinated in that in that area, became really obsessed with it and became fairly expert in, in how you trick people's minds into believing something is true when it's not true. Then people in, in uh, politics and in um, uh, business came to me and said, can you do this kind of stuff with other people that aren't in the entertainment world? And I said, yeah, I, I could probably do that. And then <laughs> I started down this route of be, working with um, with business and with politics and organizations in general in terms of how they can use their body language to stand out, to win trust, to gain credibility every time they speak. And so in, in that term, I became an expert in, in body language and in how you... Oh, oh, look, oh, you see? Yeah. There, 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 there it goes. See? Exactly. <laughs> that, that, now the, that always happens. Mark. I don't let that happen normally. What I do to stop that, you know, what I've done, I don't know how to fix these things. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> if, if anybody, if anybody there, if anybody watching this, listening to this, has got, hang on, has got a way. See, what I've been doing, I've been using what I would call gaffer tape, what we call in England gaffer tape, because yep. in, in, in the film business, this is what the gaffer right. Uh, right, uses right. quite a lot of. And, duct tape. And, and I've, I've been turning, yeah, Ella, mm -hmm. what you call it, you call it duct tape. Duct yeah? tape, yeah. And I've been kind of folding it over like that in order to make a, you know, a kind of a, I don't know what you call that, but that's what I've been doing mm -hmm. at, at around about four points on this. <laughs> and it's very light, this, it's yeah. very light, and you would think, that four or even five, five of these things would, work. would hold that up there. But no, yep. nope. not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mark, when you got into the, the politicians and, the, and business mm. people started approaching you, you worked with them, some pretty big politicians, didn't you? Yep. Yeah, I've worked with a, a bunch of uh, people who, who run countries, who are uh, prime ministers. I've worked with their oppositions. Oh. I've worked with ministers. I've worked with... Speakers of, of, of houses, um, I've worked with all kinds of all kinds of people who, who have a huge responsibility to uh, to run countries. Uh, and, and what I've done with them is to help them get their message across. Mm -hmm. What do you do with your body, with the visual image, with the surroundings, with the whole picture that you're in, including yourself? What can you do on purpose that would cause people to trust you and also cause people to distrust your opposition, the others around right. you. Often you're trying to do stuff, yes, to make you look better, but what people don't understand is often you're trying to do stuff on purpose to make them look not so good. Yep. Isn't that real? Hmm. Yeah. It, it is, as you say, real. Real. And raw. <laughs> real and raw. Um, so then what was the move then? Because you're in Toronto now, is that? Yeah. Um, so what brought you over here? Uh, what, but, uh, well, we came here really because we could. Mm -hmm. There was an there was an opportunity here. It was a, it was a country that we hadn't lived in. We could live here. There was a uh, I, my, my uh, partner Tracy, who's also uh, co co wrote the last uh, book with with me, mm -hmm. Truth and Lies: What People Are Really Thinking. Uh, she originally is Canadian, and so we had the option to come and live here. And so we we did. We gave it a try, and it worked out pretty well. Uh, you know, we, when we first showed up in Toronto, uh, it really wasn't very much. And over the last, I would say, you know, 13 years that we've been here, certainly over the last 10, it has expanded and grown mm -hmm. in, a, in an extraordinary way. And we kind of fell on our feet here. It was a, a great place to be. Canada, great greatest country in the world. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so then after that, you sort of, 
uh, started doing more of your own entrepreneurial endeavors. Do you want to mm-hmm. dig into that a little deeper? Yeah, please. Yeah, so I, I started a company called Truth Plane, which is a communication training company, and using the techniques that I knew about in terms of how you use body language, how you use the visual image to ultimately decide the way somebody unpacks and deciphers and frames and makes up in their mind your verbal message, the mm-hmm. meaning. So so we make up our meanings uh, primarily on the way that the message was delivered to us. The frame of the message is I, is, I would suggest to people, the fundamental, the most important uh, aspect of how we work out what something means. So I, fo- I, I created a training company that would focus primarily on, on that. That's what I had expertise in, but also yeah. that's what I knew had the biggest impact. Right. Yeah. And so, and so that's, that's truth plane. You can find us at www.truthplane.com. And, uh, that's been my entrepreneurial world for, uh, the last, let's say, kind of 13 years or something like that. Now, before that, I had run a, um, a bunch of other uh, companies. They were entertainment companies. Okay. I had the uh, the largest um, provider of, of English-speaking theater to Italy. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. Yeah. And I had the, uh, another company before that that I'd bought, which was doing pretty much the same thing. Um, that that I, I dissolved completely. We uh, owed a huge amount of money to the British government. And... Uh, and I decided that uh, we weren't, weren't going to pay that. Right. And uh, I bought the company. I bought, <laughs> I bought the company. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why pay the government? Yeah. Uh, I, I bought the company, and I, I knew it owed a huge amount of money to the government. And uh, and I thought I could turn it around. And it turns out, when you owe the government that amount of money, it's very difficult yeah. to turn it around. And so uh, I, I, I dissolved that company and, and left the British government very sad that they weren't getting their money <laughs> and uh, started a new one doing pretty much the same, the same work. And, uh, and that was a huge uh, success. Uh, so that was good. So in, in that context, I know Christian Christians uh, wants to ask the same thing I do. Are you willing to share yes, any of please. the, the, the flame on that company, so to speak, that uh, ended up in it, uh, maybe not the most ideal exit for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So, uh, so, so it was a company that I loved because I'd I'd been working for it. I'd worked for it, and it, and it was a great company, and everybody involved had a, a great great time. Where, where where you go? Where's he going? He's uh, <laughs> he, he's just gonna take a look at the camera right now um, a message actually <laughs> popped up on on the screen so we're just we're making sure that it's either recording still or i mean i don't mind i don't mind what you do yeah he kind of he kind of just left a very sensitive story for me he but, sort of, uh, he, you know whatever whatever you guys want to that's actually kind of you know, rude chris you, know, you, you want to step step out and do something else that's that's cool as well. No, how, right. how about that though? He he asks the question and then he takes <laughs> off. Right, he right. asks the question, and then he just yeah. disappears, just goes. Anyway, well, I'm I'm interested. Oh, so, oh, you're, in you're interested. Chris, I am. Okay, okay you're. Chris interested. might oh, be because he's again. coming oh, back. Back again now. All right. Back again now. I think just, I think he changed embar- his just mind. Embarrassment. Just <laughs> embarrassment. It was a <laughs> psychological experiment in and itself. Was to see right, right. how okay. you would handle it. Some guests right. they just continue on their merry way but no. no normally i normally i would but i'm not going to on this podcast <laughs> you, i'm gonna i'm gonna you know bring up every failure that, please that happened. and you've you, fact, you've I'm, now understood the crux of what we're doing here right exactly in fact i'm not monitoring my body language i keep having to rub my nose which which people will be thinking oh you know he's lying about something because they're not because they're not very good at reading Why would body I language. buy this clown's book Right, right, exactly. The guy can't even. Uh, so normally, normally I'd, I'd I'd take some antihistamines. So I I don't do that on a podcast. But I didn't bother this morning. I I've got a lot of allergies. I'm not used to this country. I'm from yeah, England. Yeah. This is Canada. I don't know what's in the air here. There's some kind of crazy pollen out there. But it kills me every summer. Anyway, so it I happens. didn't take my uh, my um, antihistamines. Uh, so so I'm in this kind of allergy situation at the moment and and my body language will be um 
uh, a part of that. In fact, the allergy, the allergy medicine will be dilating my pupils as well. So people, <laughs> people will be going, oh, no, 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 I can see his pupils dilating <laughs> as well. Anyway, um, okay, so, so uh, the company, yeah, I'd worked for the company. It was a great, great company, mm -hmm. really loved it. And one of the owners said, look, I've, I've had enough of this. Uh, for for various reasons, uh, probably didn't tell me the real reasons. It owed huge amounts of money to the government. <laughs> well, that's my question. Uh, and 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 so if I leave, um, the company will kind of collapse. It won't be able to do the work that it's going to do. And I was like, oh no, that's really bad. It's great work. So I said, okay, I'll I'll, I'll buy your I'll buy your portion of it. I'll buy the partner your partnership of it. And so I would be as a, a partner to uh, his previous partner in it mm -hmm. anyway uh so i did that and then in about week uh two the accountants came to me and they said so you know you know you owe all this money to uh to the british government i was like uh, and th this this is the part where the pupils start dilating <laughs> no i didn't <laughs> i didn't really i mean i knew there was you know a little bit of an issue and they right. were like no, there's really a lot of a <laughs> lot of an issue <laughs> with this, and um, and that was very uh, disappointing. Disappointing that I that this had not been really made clear to clear. me. Disappointing that I'd not really investigated this as I as I should, and then disappointing that I thought, oh man, I'm going to have to try and turn this around now, and I'm not going to make the kind of money that I hoped I would have made out of it. I was going to kind of turn this around, make this more profitable, keep on doing the same work. It's all going to be great. And now I'm in this battle with the, with the, with the government. Anyway, what was great is, so we, so we, we kind of worked through this for a number of, of years, but it was a bit of a draw. Mm -hmm. And it's never great getting those letters from, uh, you know, Her Majesty. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. So, saying here's what you owe us you owe us a whole lot more since we last told you here's what what you owe us and uh and things aren't getting any better and uh you know we're coming round to take everything <laughs> and you kind of go i don't think you can legally do that and they kind of go yeah no maybe we can't but we're going to keep asking in a very rough manner for you to for you to pay up anyway so it turns turns out turns out there is something in your favor around this in that my accountant came to me at, at one point and he said, look, how much do you really like the name of this company? And I said, well, I, this company kind of annoys me a lot now. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not fond of the name. He says, look, all we need to do is you're a debtor. Uh, you're, you, you know, the, the company owes you money. The company owns me money and the company owns the government money. But if we put it together by, by parties, you and I are the by party – uh, the largest, um, uh, we, we, we're, we're, we're the biggest amount of debtors. There's two of us and one of them. Mm -hmm. And the law says if there's two of us and one of them and we strike our debt and then con uh, then dissolve the company, there's nothing they can do about it. And I was <laughs> like, yeah, let's let's just do that. That's, that's, what, a, that's, what a loophole there. <laughs> what a loophole. Wow. Um, so, so, so that was done and, and your majesty... Um, I apologize <laughs> for that, and but I don't think you are short of a of a few bob. Right. I, think I, I think she's doing just fine. Yeah. She'll manage. Yeah. She'll manage. And she'll be all right. Awesome. Um, I have a couple questions here. You, you're not you're not just you know on Facebook now reading or reading your emails. Now he, he is you're actually I'm on your I Facebook page. Yeah, we're actually on your page. Here, but <laughs> actually my Facebook. Is more um, <laughs> yeah, I got bored, so I'm on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you, when you talk about uh, the the awesome TED talk you did about um, being inauthentic and mm -hmm. how yes. much value you can actually get out of that, my question sort of that came to mind, and I'm sure you get this a lot, is where are the lines between being inauthentic, uh, lying, and acting? And mm. is there any um, challenge there for individuals to, you know, come to terms with that um, in their own morals or values and how they portray those those uh, sure. traits? Sure, sure. So let me see if I can unpack that for you a little bit. So first of all, let's talk about uh, about lying because mm -hmm. it's, it's a good opportunity to tell you 
that my new book, Truth and Lies, What People Are Really Thinking, is available in all good bookstores. <laughs> and the title, uh, written with my co-author, Tracy Thompson, um, uh, includes the word lies. So, mm -hmm. lies. Let's talk about lies, first of all. Lying is one of our most important social skills. It's as important as being able to tell the truth. The important thing is, is knowing when to tell the truth and when to tell a lie. Mm -hmm. Just think for yourselves or anybody out there watching and listening, if you were unable to lie, uh, would you be able to hold down many of the relationships you hold down right now? Now, of course, yes, you have to be able to tell people the truth as well to hold down those relationships, but you right. also need to be able to lie and you also need to be able to lie very well in order for that to work. Uh, those people you have relationships with, they also have to be able to accept lies as well. If you're unable to join in on the lie, then again, you won't be able to hold down some of the more complex relationships that you have with people. So I just want to take it, it to be taken as a given, though you could argue it, but you won't argue it with me because you know that's my not. thesis. Yeah. It's not, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not here to argue my thesis. Yeah. Okay, but... Well, we could, um, we could try. We would just uh, do lying a very is one of our most job. important social skills. So we have to be able to lie. And so this idea of the body never lies, yes, of course it does. You, 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 you fake body language all the time brilliantly mm -hmm. in order to help you lie, to, to keep the fabric of your society together and also to keep some fabric of your personality together, the idea about you that you have. So let's talk about the idea that you have about you, often what people call a personality and authenticity. And people always go, well, you know, you've got to be authentic or they're not being, well, let's start with that one. They're not being authentic. You don't know that. You have no idea. Mm -hmm. Authenticity is just an idea in your head. It's just a, a concept. It's just a piece of imagination. You imagine that they're not being true to themselves. But how do you know what the true themselves is? How can you make a judgment about anybody else? Here's what I guess. When you say they're not being authentic, that's just code for, I don't like what they did. I don't like it. And what you're not doing is able is, is going up to people and going, I don't like you. I don't like what you did. What you do is to go, look, I don't think they're being really authentic. So I got a real problem with this authenticity thing in terms of mm -hmm, other people's mm -hmm. judgments about authenticity. You have no idea. You are not a mind reader. You have no idea if somebody's being authentic or inauthentic. You just don't know. All you do is judging. And all your statement about they're not being authentic does is tells me more about you than it ever would about that other person. So there you go. And now, uh, how do you be authentic mm -hmm. well so there's a difference between authentic goals and the actions you might do to get to those goals i know that 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 you and everybody listening you have things that you really truly desire things that you really truly want and you know you truly want them that sounds a little bit more like authenticity to me things that you are authoring things that you want written in your life uh, events that you want to be, to be able to write and to happen in your life that you want. That sounds like authenticity. Do I know what those are? Well, you'd have to tell me what they are because I'm not a mind reader. I just don't know. Now, how are you going to get those things that you want? Well, you could get them by being totally honest or you could get them by being honest and lying a little bit like, most people get what they need yeah. because they yeah. need to co-opt other people to help them get things and to co-opt other people you need the right combination of truth and lies in a mm. being being able to do that now that doesn't mean you're being inauthentic your goals are still there but how you get to your goals you're gonna have to use the normal fabric of of, of co-opting and cooperating with people and cooperation involves not only the cooperation on the truth but cooperation on the lies hmm. on 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 telling each other and others <laughs> things that you know not entirely to be accurate and still telling them it's accurate so that's essentially what what lying is so what you're telling me what i'm getting is that i've been lied to my entire life yeah and look where you've got <laughs> 
not too bad. It's no, not too bad. Not too I'm, I'm, I'm okay been, with it. Keep, yeah, keep you've been lying to me. Lied to. Yeah. You've accepted the lies, and you're doing okay. <clears throat> yeah. You're doing better than most people on the planet right now. Mm -hmm. That's it's because ben, we got a nice sign behind us. You got, nice, <laughs> you got a nice sign. You look at it. It's a bla the art of the fail. Right. How is failing an art? That's a lie from moment <laughs> one. It's not one of the. It's not. It's not an art. But but Mark, so, our our guests, our guests are cooperating with us in, in that I'm lie. Buy, we buy into that ridiculous lie. I the love art. it. Fail. Like, love like it. failure is a moment of purposeful self-expression. <laughs> now we're going. Now we're going meta on the whole podcast concept. <laughs> failure is not. Nobody purposely expresses themselves through failure. That, yeah. that, that, that art, art would be, in my mind, art would be the purposeful expression of yourself. Yeah. Nobody in life goes, I know how I'll purposely express myself today. I'll massively fuck up. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. The art of the fail. What a bunch of non... I, I'm, jo look, I'm joining in because I'm just trying to promote a book. Exactly. So that's, that's why I'm here. Hey, I, the, the, just by, before by I means. can say truth and lies, what people are really thinking. <laughs> you know, in all good bookstores. You, you, know you know what we'll do? You know what we'll do for you too? We'll actually, producing. we'll we'll put it in the show notes for you as well. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? <laughs> we'll make sure it's Down everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, it's I. What I really liked about sort of like the general purpose of your of your TED talk about inauthenticity was, um, you know, this sort of default neutral uh, perception we have of of everyone around us and how. Um, if you if you al allow yourself, I guess, open to those truth and lies, mm -hmm. then you have no idea what you could actually gain from interacting and, and actually accepting those things. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So so my take on it is, is that we are by default indifferent to most people on the planet. Right. There's, you know, uh, 7.6 billion people on the planet. My brain is going to look at most people on the planet and just go. They're not a friend. They're not an enemy. Uh, they're not a potential sexual partner for me. So they're of no use. They won't harm me. They won't. They won't make anything better. Mm -hmm. Forget about them. And you know that's the way I would suggest via my model that we are wired. And that can be a bit of a problem. That can be a bit of a problem for all of us as entrepreneurs who are trying to co-opt, trying to cooperate with as many people as possible in order to help build our idea, build our thing bigger and bigger and bigger, is that we've got to watch out for ourselves because if we're authentic, mm -hmm. if we're truly authentic about our actions, if we truly do what uh, our innate physicality and mentality wishes to do, we will ignore most people on the planet. Mm -hmm. And that I think is a problem. So we need to be inauthentic and we need to pretend, act, lie that we are interested in other people especially the ones that we look at and we go they are useless they right. are nothing right. for us mm. because if we do that we stand the chance if we can fake being interested in them we stand the chance of getting closer to to co-opting to cooperating with somebody who holds abilities which are nothing like ours, because we gravitate to our like. We're designed to find people just like us, to find the mirrors of us. And that means I'm most mm. likely to bump into a whole bunch of people mm. who are already like me, they're an echo chamber for me, and therefore I can't conspire with others, I can't cooperate with others to be bigger than myself mm -hmm. unless I find the people who are nothing like me. And they're gonna show up in my mind as me being indifferent to them or enemies, or because they are so unlike me, there'll be uh, this kind of tribal thing that goes on which says they're so unlike me, they're a threat to me. I hope this make, this kind of rant makes, no, makes no, sense. No, no, it's fascinating. To you. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It is. Um, and, and that segues me into, into um, what I'm super interested to ask you and in, in the context of failure, hmm. what are some of the, the body language cues maybe before, during, after, uh, that represent failure? Um, and how could one, um, maybe prevent or mitigate that particularly after the fact, obviously, 
um, in the in the case of of failure. Yeah, lovely. So you know, I was I was looking at some videos the other day of um, of um, professional uh, mixed martial arts um, uh, um, contenders, hmm. and and uh, for for a for a website actually that kind of focuses on that, and they wanted me to mm-hmm. look look at the the body language of people uh, of the competitors and go, and these were the top competitors in the world, and go, okay, which one's going to win and which one's going to lose based on the the body language. And so mm-hmm. what I was looking out for, and and I got pretty good results uh, mm-hmm. on that. Um, uh, now, uh, what I was looking at is in the in the face off that they often do during the weigh in, I was looking for uh, who was minimizing their their body language, who was taking up less space when they could clearly take up more space and who was ta- who was maximizing taking up a lot of space on that. So who felt they owned territory and who felt they were going to have to give up territory. And also I was looking at uh, lip suppressors, these kind of things, which for me, I was going to take that as a good indicator that somebody might be anxious, nervous, that they're not going to perform to the best of their abilities. So I was looking for who's minimizing, mm-hmm. who's doing lip, lip suppression, yeah, and who's maximizing and who isn't doing that lip suppression. And just on that alone, I was getting, you know, there were a few that I weren't getting right, but the ones I wasn't getting right, I didn't know the backstory and I hadn't gotten enough right. um, uh, data around what the backstory to the, the fight was. Uh, and there was too much going on in the background that that would overwhelm any judgment that I was that I was making. The rest of them, I was getting I was getting right. So wow. all of that to say, um, what happens to us uh, before a failure, during a failure, after a failure, is we start to minimize. I would say one of the things we do is start to minimize the amount of space that we might mm-hmm. take up. So, instead so crossing of allowing our ourselves, yeah, instead of allowing ourselves to take up more space, more room. Now, all of that to say, it, these are not absolute indicators. Mm-hmm. Okay, these not absolute at all. You have to take a cluster of information. What's more interesting for me is how could you use that knowledge yourself in order to start to create a world which. Right fits your authentic goals a little bit more. Could you fake your performance in order to reach your authentic goal? And I would say, absolutely, yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Because I can choose to do body language that maximizes, or I can choose to do body language that minimizes. I can choose not to do lip suppression. I can choose not to, uh, for example, protect my carotid arteries and windpipe. I can choose mm-hmm. not to do self-soothing gestures like this before I go into an environment that I could potentially fail in. Or I can choose to countermeasure what the, the, that natural authenticity. I mean, if I'm nervous, if I feel that I'm gonna, I could fail, then my body will want to self-soothe me, it will want to minimize, it will want to protect mm-hmm. me. And I'm saying to my body, no, I'm not going to let you be authentic. I'm not right. going to let you do that. That right. won't help me. It'll feel comfortable right. for me. And again, with authenticity, <clears throat> people go, well, it just didn't feel authentic. Right. No, you just didn't feel comfortable. <laughs> right. That's right. all. You just weren't comfortable. And life isn't comfortable when you're succeeding. Mm -hmm. When you succeed, you have to push past a barrier that Mm -hmm. other people aren't able to push past. And so it's going to be painful for you. So so don't take these comfortable positions and go, well, I'm just going to go in and be authentic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're Mm -hmm. just going to be safe. You've got to take these positions that, that expose you more. Yeah, uh, lay you open to more threat, to more pressure. It's going to feel uncomfortable. It may not feel like you, but what it's feeling like, what you're trying to be is the more successful you. Yep. Yeah, the world is full of failure for you. Yep. The world is full of barriers. It's, it's, look, 
you know, if the world wasn't full of barriers, we'd all have just what we need and what we want immediately. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, you'd have exactly what you need and what you want right now. Right. What's stopping you? There's a whole bunch of barriers. Yeah. The key is, is how do you get through those barriers? Mm -hmm. And they're all going to be, some are going to be more painful than others. Some are, are going to have been set up within systems that you think you have absolutely no control over. And you might be right. You have no control over those systems. You've been dealt into a really bad set of cards within a game that you can't control yeah. and it's really painful and it's been painful for all the people who came before you and it's going to be painful for you and it's going to be painful coming but the, the key is is how you're going to manage that because we're yeah. all managing some kind of pain in some kind of way and you can manage yeah. it partly by putting on body language that best helps you mm -hmm. right and that kind of like is is that where that fake it till you make it saying has some merit and and Big time. and to give an anecdote i know i've talked to christian about this before but i actually asked you mark a question when we met three or four years mm -hmm. ago i asked you uh or i told you i was petrified of public speaking and what could i do um i said that the one thing that i noticed was that every time i would speak right after i would feel amazing and you said can you mimic the the behavior and the body language uh, that you have after the the release essentially yeah and yeah. I never forgot that and it, since then I've done like dozens of talks and it never has felt super comfortable but you once you trick your mm -hmm. your body mm -hmm. into, get into you know feeling that yeah. that sense of comfort it's an amazing uh, psychological uh, you yeah. know, formula that happens yeah, so I love that. I love that. Great, thanks for taking my mm -hmm. my advice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, glad it's, I'm glad it's worked for you. It'd be a terrible podcast again, and you gave me this advice, and it, yeah, it just and I just crashed and burned. I, I mean, I was crushed. well. Well, the reason why Chris actually <laughs> wanted to get you on was because the advice was terrible. Yeah. So he wanted some he wanted some retribution exactly. with you. <laughs> exactly. So I'm glad you took took the advice. Yeah. But again, I want to reiterate: there are a whole bunch of people out there. Who would have, who may have said to you, well, look, you know, you just you're nervous. That's you. That's authentic. Mm -hmm. You just got to go on mm -hmm. with with that. Yeah, that's well, fascinating. That might, that might be true, but my worry is, is that also could make you spiral into hating it even even right. more. Right. So you'd never be with us right now doing yeah. these podcasts with you know with this ridiculous the art of the fail idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you'd never be presenting this utter lie right. to, 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 the <laughs> to the masses you are, to the masses as you are now yeah. and we wouldn't be having a great time right. uh, you know doing that so right. i don't doubt that there's some other ideas about this of like just go on and be the nervous you and people will love you mm -hmm. yeah uh, it's just i'm not risking i'm not risking that when there's way better interventions right. which is put on the body language of what you want to be because you can't do anything that you're not. You know, if your yeah, body wasn't yeah, able yeah. to do successful body language, it wouldn't be able to do it. I'm just asking it to do it in a different place. I'm right. just telling it to do it before you're successful. And, and, and you know, I, you can learn to, to, to do the body language of, of success in places where you're not usually successful and just up your chances, up your options of being successful. I think a world where people say, well, you know, you've got to be who you are and you've got to be the authentic you. That's just another way of saying stay in your place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're nervous, be nervous. Don't get confident. Wow. Don't succeed. Yeah. I'm I'm not willing to live in a world like that. Yeah. I, I'm I'm gonna fight against yeah. that. And go, no. <laughs> As no, would we thankfully. Not joining in on that. Yeah. Yep. Uh Mark, to close us off, I have a fun question uh for you. What is your favorite uh body language fail that you've seen maybe in the public eye that you could share with us? Favorite body That's language. That's a good one. Wow. Fail. Oh gosh. I, so it is here's the here's here's the main one and it's pretty much the reason I I have a living mm. is that uh, is that most people on the planet when they stand up to make some kind of public speech to others be it many people or or one when they stand up to do that they are most likely to hang their hands down by their sides mm. and and that is uh, their body 
trying to be comfortable mm. and it doesn't cause their audience to be comfortable. <laughs> their, the fail here is allowing their body to save them in an uncomfortable position by putting them into a rest, sleep, comfort mode, which is standing still with your hands down by your side. Hmm. Luckily, most people on the planet haven't trained with me yet. 7.6 <laughs> billion. I've got a lot to, to get through. Okay. Right. And so luckily, most people on the planet will do that. And it's that alone, I would say, that the sets the bar so low on public speaking wow. and, and presenting wow. that people save, allow their bodies to save them. They allow their bodies to be authentic for that moment where their, their eyes look out at that audience, be it five or 50 or 5,000. Mm -hmm. and, their, and their mind goes, oh, you, you better protect yourself right now. Right. Mm. Just hang your hands down by your side so you're ready to run if we need to run. Don't put too much energy into this. Hang your hands down by your side just in case we fail because then we can say, well, you know, I wasn't really trying. So mm -hmm. probably failed because I could have succeeded, but, you know, wasn't really trying. So I failed then. Also, hang your hands down by your sides because re then we're ready to do the play dead response. Uh. All those predators out <clears throat> there will just pass on by and they won't notice we're here because we weren't big enough. We were kind of asleep there on the stage or in front of the audience. I am, I'm so blessed that the population of the planet do that. <laughs> Without that, there'd be no need for me. They'd start doing other stuff, which is always, usually anything else, even anything else is to more advantage wow. than hanging your hands down by your sides. When you, I'm, oh, I'm, oh, I'm also very lucky that there are some very popular presentation courses out there that actually tell people to do that. Oh, when wow. it's, what do I do with my hands? They say, well, hang them down by your sides. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> Genius. It's amazing that that would have such an impact. Yeah, well, yeah. they just haven't thought about it. They're literally taking the first thing that's come into their head and they've written right. it down as dogma. Mm. Well, they've never explored the other possibilities. Yeah. They've never tested wow. it. They've never really gone, is this the best thing? They've gone, well, that's what we saw other people do. Um, so that's the best thing. They've never tested right, it. Right. Thank goodness for them. Ignorance at its best, but it's made <laughs> you who you are. <laughs> exactly. Other people's failure has made me what I am. Understand that. It's not who you are. It's how bad everybody else is. I love that's it. And really we could say the same, and hopefully, about <laughs> us one day. <laughs> Absolutely. As long as other people are turfing out podcasts worse than this, yep. <laughs> you're going to do just fine. <laughs> That might be tough for us, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> awesome, Mark. Christian, do you wanna you wanna close us off with uh with the last with the last with yeah, the last you the want last. you want the last one? The last the last one. Like okay. the, last, the last last one. one. All right. Mark, uh this is typically how we end off the show. Um let's be real here. Is there anyone that you think would either have a great story or that you maybe even personally would want to see come on this show and have a conversation with us oh yeah lovely great idea okay so so there's a, a guy who i've worked with for many many years great friend of mine and um and uh actually the the uh godfather to my to my uh daughter stella um uh probably the world's best uh coach has written wow. a book, uh, um, Coaching Habit, a guy called Michael Bungay Stania. I don't know whether you've already had Michael. Cool. No, we haven't. No, we haven't. Well, the reason is he's a complete failure. <laughs> There's so much, <laughs> so much in his life, which is just, I mean, a disaster. Yeah. I mean, Excellent. you know, laudable disaster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the last book that he just uh, sold, I think almost up to about a half a million copies wow. of, wow. was wow. rejected. <laughs> For, for like five years <laughs> by people who'd already published his work. Oh, going, that would yeah, be a fascinating this is, this story. Is this is terrible. <laughs> yeah, this, is, yeah. this is so, so uh, he's had, uh, you know, so much stacked up against him. He's had a lot of advantage yep. as well, by the way, but a whole bunch of stuff stacked up uh, against him um, is brilliant. I think at talking about those failures and how he's pushed through and 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 got incredible results. So uh, Michael Bungay Stania, cool. um, uh, 
heads up a company called Box of Crayons. All right. Check him out. Awesome. Get him on. Yeah, we'll get him we're on. definitely going to get him on. To, to get on here. Yeah, we will. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, awesome. Awesome. Mark, okay. Mark Bowden, everybody. Truth and Lies. Where can they get it? Amazon? Yeah. I mean, obviously, I, I'm always surprised when people ask that where question. Where do you get the, because, the you best know, margins? Do, where, where, do I, where do I get a book? You can get it from Amazon. <laughs> like, where, do you, where, where else do you get books? Like, where where, yeah, where get, where do you make the best margins? Where do you make the best margins? Book. We'll we'll send people question. there. Well, maybe maybe we when we ask this question and the guest doesn't have ha, doesn't have it on Amazon, maybe we're trying to bait them into that huge failure. It's like mm. you guys right, forget exactly. about right, that. Right, right. I failed to get my book right, on right. Amazon. <laughs> right. Even people who haven't even <laughs> written a book have got a book on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> There's just... it's actually true. <laughs> yeah. To- that is totally true. Yeah. All right. Well, Mark, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, everybody, get the book. Yes. Uh, we'd love to have you on again. Always a pleasure. Had a blast. Just had a blast. Yeah, that was fun. Okay, thank you, Mark. Fun. Been great fun. Been Thanks lovely so uh, seeing you both. Uh, I'll, I'll come on anytime. Perfect. Love it. Awesome. And thank you. No, not you. Yeah. Thank you for watching today's episode. Thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, Before you leave, please subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you know when we put out new content. And there's some recent videos somewhere here. Okay? (laughs) Check those out because we got a lot of good content, a lot of good episodes for you. A lot of failures, a lot of fuck-ups, including our own. That's it.